that area, man. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. That, that same thing they did in my area. Just straight took them away. Let me read one more about basketball, man. Then we're going to push on to this next subject. From Cornelius Small. My godson is 6'1". Plays AAU, excuse me, plays AAU and street ball. He should be soft and spoiled, but he cocky with a smart mouth, but good with the hands. He always getting into some stuff. We trying to get him to just prove it on the court. Cornelius, look, man, try to, I was that type of guy. I got technicals all the time. Very fiery player, and I couldn't let it. When we were being screwed over by the refs, which we were a lot because we played some schools that had all colonizers and we weren't that. So, you know, the officiating was shady to say the least. So maybe that's got something to do with why I don't like shady officiating so much. I never even thought about that. Psychological. Wow. Like that's some shit. But um, appeal to, how can I put this? Just appeal to his sense in saying he just has to play the game. Not the game of basketball, but the game of life. And at the end of the day, he'll be better for it because he's not by himself and he has teammates to think about. So appeal to that sense. I'm sure y'all y'all have already done that. But appeal to that side of him, you know what I'm saying? Because he's probably one of them cats like me that don't stand for BS and a little bit fiery. And I used to get texts too, man. I used to get texts too. So I understand. <laughs> that's not true okay one more joke from clay davis that ninja is that dude that will argue for a call for 30 minutes just to get the ball back motherfucker that's not true sir that's not true all right man this is the doug stewart show filling in today is your boy that ninja man i appreciate you coming in man i appreciate y'all listening man no doubt no doubt all right man thank y'all for listening man thank y'all very much um let me see okay let me i'm gonna do one more because i see my man and put something on here this is from key c who also has a show on uh, WSME. I believe he comes at you on Saturday. The Kicking It With Kesey show. From uh, Kesey. But I have seen some dumb shit happen at the courts as well. When ninjas got into a fight and the cat pulled a gun. Just buck shots at a whole park. So we can't uh, deny that it doesn't happen. But if the court wasn't there. It's still going to be a ninja shooting somewhere. So how do we fix the bigger problem? You know what Kesey? That's some deep shit. And I understand you, but I guess my thing is, and I've always been this way, why punish the many for the actions of a few? Why punish the many for the actions of a few? And I think the real issue is the neighborhood needs to clean that up. The person that's doing that, y'all need to get at him because he's fucking up y'all court in y'all neighborhood. It shouldn't be cool to shoot in the neighborhood. But you're talking about a deep subject that goes back to parenting and the household and Margaret Sanger. And it, that, there's, too much, there's too much stuff for me to talk about. You know what I'm saying? In that regard, it's a completely different show. Can't do it, but I feel you, though. All right, man. This is the Doug Stewart Show, hosted today by your boy, That Ninja. And by the way, by the way, the Underground Railroad Show is a show that I host, man. It comes at you Mondays on WSME at 5 Central, 6 Eastern. Be sure to check me out. Also on Thursday, 6 Eastern, 7, uh, excuse me, 6 Central and 7 Eastern. All right, man. Next, let's go ahead and get into uh, Mr. Aaron Hernandez. Um, Hell, right off the bat, man. Hell, he's he's uh, dead. Uh, alleg- not dead. Not allegedly dead. He is dead. By an apparent suicide. Uh, I don't know if anybody else's uh, alarm is going off in their head, but mine is a little bit, man. Do y'all really think that my man is uh, that my man committed suicide? And just for a little bit, can't keep it going, but uh, just a little bit. He has passed. I know a lot of uh, alleged crimes he committed are horrible, but just in the fact that a human being is gone, and I just find it hard to believe that he actually killed himself, man. So I guess let's talk about that for a second. And just a couple of things I think about when I think about the Aaron Hernandez thing. I guess, man, I, when I look at it, I guess I look at it and think of to myself choices and decisions, you know, saying different factors in life. Uh, he lost his father to a damn hernia surgery, if I'm not mistaken, when he was younger. And you know what, man, that actually, <laughs> when I think about it, it's not even, I'm having hernia surgery in like a couple of weeks. Motherfucker. Didn't need to read that story. But uh, he lost his father to complications from a hernia surgery. And everybody to a man that knows him, his family, his friends say that truly affected him. And that was one of the causes of his uh, downfall and his spiral around as far as making bad decisions in his life. And I guess really when I look at this man, just on the aspect of uh, the killing himself thing. At this point in the process, when you've already, you know, your life has been stripped, you're in jail, you've been there for a while now, you've been convicted, been acquitted, you know, you're still fighting the trial. It just seems odd to me that he would off himself now. And again, this jail as well as does the entire justice system and the police departments throughout this country have systematic racism and 
fraud throughout every precinct just about in the country so in every jail as well this jail in particular has a history of shady things happening like this we saw what happened with Lawrence Phillips who allegedly hung himself I just don't necessarily believe that it seems shady I can't do anything to speculate so I won't go too far with it and um allegedly there's a report that he had John 316 written on his forehead now I don't know how true that is but allegedly John 316 was also written on his forehead as well so I don't know. You think he wrote John 316 on his own forehead and then hung himself? Allegedly. I mean, we really don't know. We only know what they tell us. Uh, and I guess uh, just to clarify John 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And I want to say that's the English remix version. I think they had a lot more old language in the original, but that's what was written on his forehead. Not the actual Bible verse, but John 316. I don't know something about that seems beyond shady and odd and uh, suspect very suspect but he is now deceased and no longer with us um my thoughts when I look at this and again this is just how my mind works a little different the same way other people watch the NBA and enjoy it I look at it and have certain thoughts I'm having certain thoughts about this I'm looking at him like damn uh decision okay this is what I do this is the way I'm built when I see somebody do something, when I see somebody do something, what kind of, when I witness somebody commit some type of act or heinous crime or maybe just something minor, the first thing my brain does is put myself or attempt to put myself in their shoes and, and try to find a way to uh, justify what they did. In short, meaning that I put myself in their shoes or try to and say, what could happen to make me do that? What could happen to me to make me behave in that manner? And otherwise, I'm trying to justify their behavior to understand how upset I should get at them for what they did. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but that's kind of what I do. So in this situation, I'm looking at the same thing. What in the hell could have happened to make you go the route you went, allegedly? Now, to me, it was uh, apparently uh, PCP or the angel dust. I think that had a whole lot to do with it because apparently that shit makes you crazy. I mean, if you do enough white, white meaning cocaine and or crack, or get on something like heroin. Shit like that makes you subhuman. That's what it's built for. That's what it's designed to do. So behavior that any somewhat sane or rational human being would look at and say, that is fucking crazy. What the hell are you doing? It doesn't register, you know, to other people. Like the great Andre 3K said, seeing all depend on what you believe in. Then. Faith is what you make it. That's the hardest shit since MC Ren. So if you don't think something is bad necessarily, you'll keep it, keep doing that shit. You'll keep on rolling with it because to you, it's normalcy. This is cool. If you grow up in a crack house, maybe hitting a rock isn't that big, uh, big a deal to you. If your parents do powder and you get older and see some powder, you're not looking at it the same as somebody who's never seen that shit or knows what it is and thinks, thinks it's bad. Having said all that, I think that PCP and or Angel Dust that he was allegedly on probably had a lot to do with it. I think the loss of his father probably started him on a spiral that sent him down roads and streets and avenues and had him making decisions that were not beneficial to him. That eventually ended up, ended him up in this position, ended him up, that ended him in this position. So extremely unfortunate, tragic to see the man's life end like this in his what, early 20s, early, mid 20s, uh, has a child, if I'm not mistaken, a fiance friends and family to care about him despite the alleged acts that he committed so it's tragic and there's a lack of justice for his alleged victims as well so it's bad all the way around but i look at it man and i just think to myself i just think about decisions in life again the title of the showcase and point cause and effect cause and effect wasn't in the title but uh, from the aspect of cause and effect again i can remember being a kid and doing lots of dumb shit and i had good parents but i, I made a few bad decisions i think everybody has but Honestly, life, and if you've lived long enough, you know this is just a matter of I made a left instead of a right. Instead of running into that open field when the police were chasing us, we jumped fences, doubled back, ran through neighborhoods, and jumped in ditch ditches because a car can't keep up with your own foot. But, you know, it's just a matter of not making a, a, a wrong turn, not making a bad decision of saying, you know what, I'm not going to do that, of having some type of fear or restriction about your behavior. I, my life could be so much different, man. And again, different if I wouldn't have played ball. I guess that's what I'm working my way around to. Eighth grade, I was right there on the cusp of being a fucking knucklehead. I mean, right there. Right there. I almost willingly, willingly ready to get into it. And if I wouldn't have been allowed to play football here, because originally I wasn't because of my grades at the time, but they changed the rule, which allowed me and uh, my best friend to this day, one of my best friends to this day, to play ball. 
And that's, you know, kind of when our relationship began, you know, and uh, he's a quarterback, I was running back. Originally, we were both running backs, but we lost our quarterback. He was multi-skilled, so he did the quarterback thing. Another story for another day. But it started there, man, and sports grounded the hell out of me, man. So I always have a special place in my heart for sports because it truly kept my black ass out of jail, I believe, and or at least out of trouble. Because everybody I was hanging around back then, drug addict, crackhead, dead, jail. Literally, all of them. Some of them still around, you know, living their life and they cool. But the main people I was hanging around, dude, drug addicts, crackheads, don't take care of their daughter on, uh, in jail and or dead. And or dead. Um, right around that time when I started playing ball and I wasn't around a cat anymore, just to give you a quick example of decisions. I know everybody gets this, but just my little story. Uh, I had a friend, my best friend at the time when I was a kid. Who unfortunately has succumbed to drug use last time I saw him, man. Straight up a uh, dope head. Sad shit. But at any rate, um, I remember one night he became friends with this other cat. And I think they eventually I got on that white and whatnot. But this is when we were young, way before all that. They, um, There was a car dealership. You know, there was a car dealership, a Ford dealership to be exact. And this one, Mustangs were really hot. And, you know, in a normal circumstance, we spend a night at this house, kick it. Sometimes we sneak out, go meet some chicks or something. You know, you spend a night at this house, parents go to sleep. We uh, climb through his window. His window was big enough to climb through. We climb through his window and go out and kick it and come back, you know, climbing the window. Sorry, mom and dad. I didn't tell y'all about that. But we you know we climbed through his window and stuff. We did it all the time. We left a lot. Honestly, if I being honest, he used to steal his parents' car and we ride around sometime. You know, again, parents, I'm sorry. One night we almost got hit too because he wasn't paying attention, but I digress. Um, we were ride, walking around doing whatever and we do that on a normal basis. So this night I, I didn't I didn't spend the night because I was busy. I was playing ball. I think we had a game the next day. And these two decided to go to um, this Ford dealership, and they stole two Mustangs. No shit. Stole two Mustangs, dude. They bust through the uh, gate. We're riding around with them. Um, one, of the, one of them was nervous, couldn't find the light switch. The police saw him, you know, with the lights not on, started uh, following them, started chasing them, and chasing sued. One friend actually got away. The other one got away, but came so close to having a wreck that he scared himself to death and got out of the car and just walked. Long story short, he got arrested. Both of them ended up getting arrested, got a record for it. And the next day, I remember he was allowed to have company. You know, parenting was there, but, you know, your kid steals a car. You shouldn't be able, able to have company the next day. But that type of shit led him to being the type of person he is today. But I'm just saying, I could have been there. Easily decisions. You know what I'm saying? If I wouldn't have been playing ball, I would have been there. I would have been there. And had a fucking car theft on my fucking record as a teenager. So, I mean, um, just decisions, man. Life is all about decisions. And unfortunately, a host of decisions that my man made put him in a position to eventually be found to be found in a cell hung. With John 3.16 written on his fucking forehead. Sad and tragic, man. Sad and tragic. I really... Fucking sad and tragic, man. Uh, do I think he killed himself? Not really. I, I really don't. You know what I'm saying? I guess anything's possible, but... Just considering what happened, when it happened, how long he's been in jail... It just doesn't seem... Just doesn't seem like he would. Alright, man. This is the Doug Stewart Show. Hosted by your boy, That Ninja Today. Thank everybody for listening. Uh, just going to read a little chat and reaction to uh, the Aaron Hernandez thing. I felt it needed to be addressed, but big story, you know, big story. Um, I'm not going to get into too much speculation because I don't know what happened, but but damn. Um, let's see here. Okay, from Fail Pay. How can you write on your forehead without a mirror? Ish be slanted as hell. I guess that was my thing because I don't even think, are they even allowed to have mirrors? Because, you know, you can break glass, turn it into a weapon. So I would think there are no mirrors. I'm not familiar with prison life. I wouldn't know, but I'm just saying. Yeah, that's what people are saying. How the hell did he write on his own uh, forehead? Tiffany Poole in Portland said, didn't Lawrence Phillips kill himself in a cell and get life? No, no. Okay, from Tiffany Poole in Portland. Didn't Lawrence Phillips kill his celly and get life? They were both trying to beat the sentence, I guess. Well, that's one way to put it. I see where you're coming from. Hell, fuck it. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, Yeah, Hernandez wasn't getting out. No doubt about that. But yeah, Lawrence Phillips killed his cellmate. But hell, I mean, I'm sure that was self-defense. Dude getting at you, what you gonna do? So he killed a cellmate and ended up getting life, but I mean you're in you're in the fucking jungle. You're in you're in a fucking war zone. You're in a war zone. So I mean I guess my thing is um I guess my thing is that I don't know, in that sense, man, I, obviously Lawrence Phillips, I don't he has a lot of problems that arise from him being a kid. A lot of fucked up shit happened to him. No not necessarily an excuse, but there's a reason for his behavior. And uh, he killed a cellmate because at that point you're in a fucking war zone. You got to do what you have to do. Ended up getting life for that. And I don't know, you're probably saying maybe, you know, he just offed himself because he couldn't see himself spending the rest of his life in jail. It's possible. When you're sitting around thinking about what you could have had and you're looking at where you at, that's possible. But I mean, who knows? It just seems, it just seems, um, it just seems really shady, man. It just seems shady. 
Oh yeah, um, oh yeah, oh I forgot uh, my man Kesey, who I mentioned earlier. Kesey has a show tonight on WSME, I believe at eight o'clock Eastern. So uh, shout out to Kesey. Be sure to tune in to WSME for Kesey's uh, show tonight, the Kicking It with Kesey show. From uh, Clay Davis, that ninja, you would put yourself in her nanny's shoes.